Hi Flosstube, it's Diane. Today is May 24th, 2021. Hope you've had a good day. I have my earbuds in. Somebody said that they did hear me better with my earbuds in. So if you see the blue blinky, that's what it is. So I'll keep doing that. Um, this morning I took Mozzie in for his annual vet check. Everything's good. He's 50 pounds explains a lot. He's a chunk. Um, but they're good for the year. And then I took Stormy and it's easier to take them in separately. I've learned that. <laughs> and the vet is really close. She has an owie on her neck. So if you have a pet, particularly this time of year, as it's getting warmer in the northern hemisphere and their collar gets wet, because my kid, my dogs, they love when I'm out there watering flower, you know, they're playing in the water and everything. Just be aware that the collar, if it's wet, like right here, um, it can rub and it can get a mild infection and, and that's what she has. It'll be gone in a week, but she has a whole big shaved area. And um, yeah, just be aware of that with your pets. You know, take the collar off, let it fully dry, and then it should be fine. So we're just gonna keep an eye on it more. Other than that, she's good. She is 47 pounds and uh, yeah, 47 and a half pounds. So nearly 100 pounds of a dog in this house. And if you went by poundage of hair that we go through, my daughter, we have a like seven by 10 or eight by 10, just area rug upstairs. So she vacuumed it today. She had to empty the vacuum three or four times because of the dog hair. Yeah, but um, then I went and got groceries. I had wiped all the fridge out and just threw away just some questionable things we had in there. We didn't have too much. We never really have too much because, hello, I have a lot of people in my house. My kids were getting a little concerned that the fridge was so empty, <laughs> but it's good now. But the weather's been beautiful. Uh, my daughter graduated on the 15th and it was an absolutely beautiful day. Oh my, the weather was just perfect. Just enough of a breeze you know, to keep it cool but not cold and keep the bugs away. And oh, it was, it was good. Um, I tried very hard not to get emotional, but it was a good, good day. So I am halfway there. I have seven. This year I'll have seven students, uh, a senior. See, a senior, a sophomore, senior, sophomore, eighth, sixth, fourth, second. Well, technically, if they were in a public school situation. And then Minnie Dot, he's not quite, he won't be quite five. But, you know, my kids have different strengths. Um, like my sixth grader, math, he is just, his reading skills we're still working on. But yeah, it's, they're growing up so fast. So I'm halfway there and we had dinner that night. We brought home dinner. So I'll just say when you have a child graduation like that, get takeout, you know, don't think I'm going to go home and make a seven course meal. It's a very long day. Just don't do it. Enjoy the celebration, make it a bigger celebration, you know, keep it easy on yourself. Um, so we had 13 of the kids here for dinner. Uh, one son, he had to work during the graduation ceremony, but he came here and it was good to see him. And yeah, it's just, it was a good day. Really good day. We were supposed to have our recital yesterday, but our piano teacher who's already had COVID was exposed to an active case. And so we're figuring out what that means. Hopefully soon. And then really officially be done. But uh, yesterday, uh, this last weekend, I spent... My husband is doing this certification for gun safety. Um, and they do this class and they in stress and stress and stress gun safety. Well, they have to be certified so they can host these events. And it's a lot of history involved. A lot of... Uh, different techniques, um, 
it's it's a lot more involved than I ever thought it would be. So they're they had to get some new equipment bags, and so I had to sew on the labels. And I'm gonna put a link to an Etsy shop if you ever need that, like a you think of a a military uniform, you have the label, or you know a serviceman at a garage or something, that type of label. I'm gonna link the shop that we got him from. He is in Eastern Europe. I can't remember the exact, or is he Hungary? He could have been Hungary. That would still be Eastern Europe. Um, anyway, his shop, very fair prices, excellent work, excellent work. And so I'm gonna link his shop below in case you ever need them. And then, uh, so I sewed those on, that was tricky. I had to kinda jerry-rig my machine using my yoga blocks and and we had to do this kind of number because you can't how you have to sew those things on it, it it got interesting but then I did some quilting and I did some FF owing which I'm going to show uh, I did another block for my daughter's quilt but it's uh, these are the repeat blocks so the next I'm planning the next time you see it that it will be pieced so I want to get that done by the end of June. That being said, what did I FFO for Spring Fling 2021 with Stitchville? It's a retreat hosted by Stitchville. And discovered that the, I guess the Oak Ridge Convention Center, I know Michelle Rudy had the Midwest retreat there once or a couple times. That place actually sold, so it's not going to be available so I'm not sure what we're doing next year. But this was the piece that Kathy Haberman gave us, Peaceful Spring. According to her social media and all contact I've had with her, uh, this will eventually be released to everybody. It's a retreat exclusive for now, and this is Peaceful Present. Um, as you can see, this one has linen, linen, two different pieces of linen, and this one has two different colors of linen, but you actually have five pieces of linen that you stitch on and then assemble. So it's a challenge. It's a little bit of a challenge. It's not impossible though. Kathy's directions are so fabulous. And last time I showed it, I had this one completely done and I was working on this row. Um, and over the seams that when you put it together, you put these little decorative stitches and it just adds a little kind of crazy quilt feel to it. You have it here too. And between these two patterns, these patterns both use Classic Color Works colors, but they use the same, they're the same color palette. So I was able to use the same um, floss. And the darker is 32 count platinum and the lighter is 32 count antique white. So these will be released at some point. So, the big guy is this one. So you can see here's the cloche I have. This is stuffed with wool roving, which was another thing. I'd never done that before. I'd always used polyfill. Um, I think that's the only thing I've ever stuffed my pillows with. But Kathy prefers the wool roving. And Stitchville is going to be selling packages of it. I, I have no idea of prices or size or anything. Um, but that's a possible source for you. But here are the cloche, vine, the flowers with the bees, vine, and then kind of a quilty layer. So you stitch the three on the platinum, the two that are duplicates, on the antique white, follow Kathy's directions, cut, sew, and you hand sew these together, which is a new thing. I hadn't done that before either. Hand sewing two pieces of linen, but I do have a couple of other projects that do call for that kind of technique, so that's a good thing to learn. And then down here we have the elongated cross stitch where it's a taller, it's the same width as a regular cross stitch, but it's taller. Here is the herringbone. I like the herringbone stitch. <laughs> Kathy in her direction, she showed going from this side of the pattern and, and working this way. Well, it made this row go so quickly. I could not get my herring bones to go that way, so I started from this side and went that way. So 
If you ever have difficulty with a specialty stitch, maybe you need to do it in a different order or a different direction, tackle it from a different direction. Because after I did that, it was fine. And this one is actually a woven stitch where you put these little itty bitty stitches in and then you weave the thread through it. And it has a really nice kind of lacy effect. And then these are just fat X's. So yeah, it turned out really cute. And the color, this is not my color palette in my home, but it's definitely springy and I'm gonna be displaying this. And I even have a cloche, but this might be too big for the cloche. But this guy is not. Here's the peaceful present. Again, same colorway. And yes, there's these do smell like fudge, but we won't focus on that. I somehow shifted this whole motif like up one or down one. I don't remember which way. And I said, you know what? It's there. Mm-hmm. It's not moving. And then again, it's the herringbone that is the specialty stitch across that kind of crazy quilt. And these pins were given to us in the retreat. Kathy made them. She also made this backing fabric with the help of her sister. So we got a little sample of that. This is stuffed with crushed walnut shells, which I had never used those before either. But um, yeah, it's this hefty little guy. This would fit under the cloche. So I might do that. But yeah, those are done. And I also uh, finished my gift, which I can't show because I will be exchanging that during StitchCon to, with my friends. And I, I'll take a little video or picture of it before I give it away and share it at that time after StitchCon. So uh, the little bit of haul that I have are my, oops, I see the one, my monthly threads from Fiberlicious Fibers. And I get five of them a month. And they are 10 yards. And these are this month's. So we have, this is Wisteria. I don't think you're seeing the yellowy, oh no, this one's not the yellowy one. This is a uh, lavender and lilac. So kind of a light purple to more of a blue purple. This one is the one that has the yellow. This is honey lavender. So honey with the yellow, lavender with the purple. This one is shades of purple. And this one is lavender storm. Mm -hmm. And this one is lavender mist. So these are a little more variegated, but that's okay. In a good project, they would be perfect. I love stitching with her fibers. They're very, very nice. Um, so her theme was Lavender Moon. That was her theme for May. I think she's announced what her theme for June is. But yeah, I do. I get those. And then I also received my Threads of the Month Real Threads. The Nest Egg program, I get 10 classic color works. So, I think I need that. This one, Mermaid's Pin. Lettuce Leaf, Magnolia Blossom, Macaroni and Cheese. Huh. I didn't realize they made that one. Hickory Sticks. Oh, that's a coveted one. Mermaid's Fin, Mariner's Compass, Lemon Grass, Embers, Miss Madeline, and Ladybug. I'm going to add those to my staff, my collection, but I have been, oh, in my other haul, I was inspired by Pam and Steph, so I ordered myself some t-shirts that say Mondat Stitches on them, and I'll be bringing them to StitchCon. This one's the teal heather, and this one is the gray heather, and again, I'll link this Etsy shop also, 
I thought her prices were fair. These are really, really soft. They're, they're very soft. I thought her prices were fair. I think she's in Texas. Uh, she's in the States. Um, but I'll link her shop and they were here very, very quickly. So what else have I been stitching? I grabbed my Ann Morrison and this is through uh, traditional stitches in Canada. My understanding is they have no more copies available for purchase. If they ever do, they will let us all know. But this is the uh, stitch along it began December 5th, 2020 and it's expires or is finished officially, you can still stitch. I mean, there's no cross stitch, please. Uh, December 5th, 2021. If you have your piece completed, not necessarily framed, but completed, then you are eligible for a special drawing that Nicola Parkman is going to do for an antique sampler. And the admin of the group on Facebook, I'll link that below, um, she divided this. So like if you did it each month, do this section. So last time I showed it, I had this up done. That was through March. And this section, this row here is April and this row here is May. I'm doing mine on 40 count Havana by Week Style Works. And I have the piece completed through April. I just started the May section. This May section here all the letters, I have these strands of thread just floating around. Oh, that's because the next letter is in the red. That's why I have it. All this section of letters, those are eyelet stitches, all the letters. And so they're a little, they take a little more time, but um, the effect is, is beautiful. And I do stitch in hand, so that's why this is not, it's all wrinkly. Um, I've learned over the years to stitch in hand to keep my tension even. It does take practice. I know some people prefer Q-snaps, frames. You do what you like. I'm using the 100.3 silks for the most part. There were a few that my LNS did not have, but they did have the Averisua alternatives. So it's all silk, and I'm only using one strand over two threads. On the spools, these spools here. You just use it as it comes off the spool. These type of skeins it are stranded and you just remove one strand. Um, but it's beautiful. The Severe Soie is so nice to stitch with. Um, it lays so nice on the fabric and I love my color choice. I was kind of nervous about going a little darker and like this goldish color here for the D. I know that kind of blends in with my fabric, but I've also looked at some of the lighter colors of fabric and the blue is harder to see. So I think really no matter what color fabric you chose, something would be harder to see because it has such a wide variety of colors in this particular piece. But you still know that this is a D because you see the C here and you see the E here. So your mind can fill it in and your eye can be drawn to that area. And I think that would be true on any color. So then there's the letters and then there's an eyelet row here. And then for June, you start the section with the bird. Did I put my pattern? She's kind of divided this up into like puzzle pieces. I, my mind doesn't work that way. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of either do half this way or come under the bird and basket and kind of loop around that way. That makes more sense in my mind. But again, you stitch it however you want to stitch it. And this heart is all eyelets too. Otherwise, this uses full crosses, back stitching. I don't think there are any other specialty stitches beyond eyelets. And if you didn't want to do eyelets, you could do Smyrna crosses. There's a whole variety of stitches you could try. Or you can even just stitch it. I guess somebody, because I remember their video, traditional stitches YouTube video. They said somebody stitched it just full crosses. 
and it looked really good. I, I think however you stitch it, it would look beautiful. December 5th is my husband's birthday, so that's an easy deadline for me to remember. And I do want to have this done before then. So let me put this away before I lose anything. My Anne bag that I made. The other piece, excuse me, because I finished stitching those and then I just pulled this out maybe last night even. It wasn't, I haven't worked on it much. This is my Chatelaine. This is through the Gift of Stitching magazine. At least that's where I got my pattern from. The pattern is available for purchase on the website and I'll try and link it below because I do not have a color page, cover page. I'm stitching mine on 32 count antique white Jobelin. And my goal for Whipgo, there are four gates. I have all four gates done and that's my goal. So I'm not that far away. And these gates stitch up pretty quickly. I brought this because um, at the vet you have to drop your your pet off and you can't go in. I guess next week you can. But you can't go in with your pet. So I'm thinking, oh, I have a half hour. No. I didn't get very far. But yeah, it, it's turning out nicely. I am definitely going to be bringing this piece with me to StitchCon. And now that we don't have to wear masks in the convention center, I'm probably going to bring a silk gauze piece also. I'm planning on bringing three pieces. Well, technically four. Because the fourth piece is cardinal points. The piece that Pam did finish. I'm going to kit that up at St StitchCon. Get the threads, or as many threads as I can. And probably a piece of fabric. I don't know if I'll actually stitch any of it at StitchCon, but that's my goal. Is I will kit it up there. But the third piece that I'm going to bring, I'm not sure. Um, the reality is I'll probably only stitch on one thing, but that's okay. That's okay. I have a couple of options available. Whipgo. Whipgo for May was uh, my full coverage piece, White Dragon. I am officially scrapping that piece. Right now in my life, I to have a setup... Where I'm comfortable doing the full coverage. It's not humanly possible at this point with my kids and my dogs and my husband. I get set up and then, you know, five things have to be done right then. So I am scrapping that piece. When I pulled it out to stitch on it, because Whip Go for May were two numbers and they were both white drag and a thousand stitches. So I thought, oh, 2,000 stitches. I tried. I put probably 300 stitches in, but I was hating the fabric. I, was, I wasn't I was hating the pattern, but I was hating the fabric. I, I, mm. I just got to the point, I'm like, why am I doing this? So I am permanently pitching that project. I'm keeping the pattern because I can see myself in a matter, just a matter of a few years pulling that pattern out and restarting it probably on a 25 count, it's on an 18 count now, or a 20 count maybe. I just absolutely hated that fabric. I, I was fighting it and it just was not. So I said, you know what? Forget that. So I had the two Whipco numbers. Well, I can't mark them off. That's cheating. So I said, okay, one of the numbers I am finishing my retreat pieces. So, boom, that number is gone. So that's one reason I made sure to FFO those this month. The other number, I've decided to have a new start. I haven't had a new start beyond this retreat piece for a while. And I have a number of things kitted. So I'm gonna have a new start and then five days on that start. For me, a day is two hours, so 10 hours. I haven't figured out if it's going to be Old Feathers by Rosewood Manor because that's just beautiful or Night Walked Down, Land of the Free by Teresa Kogut, Night Walked Down is by Blue Flower or what was the other one that I was looking at? Um, 
Buckleberry Sampler by Rosewood Manor. So one of those is going to get started. And then when I have five days worth or 10 hours, then I'll mark that number off. I think that's fair. It sets a goal. And I feel I need a new start. Uh, Jesse Marie has not called the numbers for June yet. That should be by the end of the week. And I have two other spots that have new starts. So it's possible in June I would actually have three new starts. You never know. I never expected White Dragon to be called in the, twice in the same month. And um, the majority of the pieces that are on there be, are whips. So maybe I'll bring whatever whip it is, one of those, to StitchCon. I don't know. We shall see. But yeah, I'm getting excited to go to StitchCon. Yeah, I am. I'm not looking excited, you know, getting excited to wear a mask all the time I'm on the airplane, but it's a fairly short overall time on the airplane for me anyway. And, you know, that is a confined space with a number of people. And I have been on a plane that people do not understand deodorant. It's like, oh my God, you got the key. Teenage boys who don't. Um, one of my sons got his braces on last week, or no, the week before last. And my daughter, who just graduated, is going to have her braces on in July. So she's so looking forward to that. Woohoo, mom! Um, last year she had her wisdom teeth removed, and she had a piece of skin between her front teeth that were pushing her teeth apart. So that was removed. And so, yeah, she's, but she's maybe working some more and then she's looking at going into business with regard to statistics type of aspect of the business, that type of, of business, because business is a huge umbrella. That's what she's looking at right now. So, yeah, and my oldest daughter is doing well. Uh, she's healthy. All her scans have come back clear. Uh, she is moving to a new apartment in the next couple weeks with a new roommate who speaks Russian. She's fluent in Russian. That's her family background. She didn't grow up in Russia, but she's fluent in Russian. And I haven't met her yet, but my daughter has met her and, and thinks she's really cool. And then my Marine... He's still doing the trainings. He's doing all the things. He has another year, minimum. So I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him in 15 months now. So that's kind of hard, but I'm going to be the grown up and not cry. But yeah, that's, that's what we're doing now. We're staying healthy. Um, Stormy, she usually goes on walks with me. She loves going on walks. Last week we went on a two-mile walk, two-and-a-half-mile walk. Mind you, my calves reminded me the next day that I need to stretch before I do that because we kept at a fairly quick pace. But, yeah, it's good just to soak in the sun. Oh, it feels so good. And although it's supposed to be like 60 degrees this week, then it's supposed to be 90 the next day. Lovely Minnesota weather. Um, I did want to mention that I will put some flosterbers below. Some are new to me, some that I watch always. So feel free to look at those. And if you do go to their channel, just say, hey, I, I saw your channel or found this link on Mondot Stitches video. I would like to know where some people find my videos and I'm never going to monetize. And I'm sorry if there's any ads that pop in. Because I know there are some floss tubers who are not monetizing. I try and watch their videos and there's an ad like every 30 seconds. That is not them. That is YouTube. YouTube has told us that they're going to just put ads wherever they want ads. And we have no control over what the ads are. So um, if that's happening, I'm so sorry. There's just nothing I can do about it. But... Yeah, just tell people where you find their videos so then they know, oh, if I mention it on Instagram, that's how people find me or whatever. 
is a way of encouraging each other. I'll put that below. I'll link the links. Give me a, a day. It usually takes me a day to get a computer. Although it's a little easier now that most of the kids are done with their math. Uh, one son has two more lessons in math and then he'll be done for the year. Um, yeah, that's all I really have. There's something else I was going to say, but it must not be important. But again, I'm going to be at StitchCon B as a boy. And if you're there, come and say hi. Love to meet you. Probably won't do a lot of hugging just because of the situation we're in. But we can do, you know, elbow bumps or whatever. Whatever. Um, yeah. So I want to get this uploaded and jump back into stitching. I'm going to work on, I want to get the shadow line. I want to get those gates done. So then I can mark off another number on my whip go. I think that was February's whip go. And then uh, figure out what I want to stitch from there. So I'm also going to be doing more quilting, and I'll show them when there's something to show. And uh, yeah, we'll just enjoy our summer here in the Northern Hemisphere. And I'll talk to you all later. Feel free to subscribe and comment, and I love all your comments. Although I've had a few weird ones I've had to delete. I don't think that's unusual, unfortunately. There's just some odd people in the world. But um, yeah, I try and heart it or respond back if you have a specific question. I try and do that. Although my last video, somebody asked me a question and I went back to answer the question and then it was gone. The comment was gone. And I looked on the laptop, I looked on my phone, I looked in. So I don't know if they took it down or it went into the YouTube universe somewhere. But uh, my email's below, my Instagram's below. You can see a picture of Stormy's Owie. She's all shaved right here. And Mozzie, he jumped right into the driver's seat. I'm like, uh, you don't have a license, bud. It kind of looks at me like, well, so get me one. <laughs> I'm like, no. No, Mozzie. But that's all my rambling for today. So I will uh, talk to y'all later. Stitch. Enjoy some floss tube. We're having stuffed meatloaf tonight for dinner that my husband did something to. So hopefully it's good. To be honest, he's a pretty good cook. My husband is. He's a very good cook. And we're teaching all of our sons and our daughters to be good cooks. And some of my sons can make oh, delicious. It's good. So we uh, love to you all. Talk to you later. Bye.